Hi everybody and welcome to the Hospitality Academy. My name is Mark Dickinson and I'm your trainer and mentor. It's really awesome to have you with us and thanks for downloading this program. Today we're going to be talking about going from strength to strength. And to get us thinking, let's just talk a little bit about what people commonly perceive strength to be. We often say that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So if you have a steel chain with a plastic link in the middle, the chain isn't as strong as the steel, it's only as strong as the plastic. So our job would be to take out that link and put in a good one. And that's the same in operations, that's the same in service. We don't want to have these weak links where our service falls down so everything's good and we have this one element that's not good. Another common thought is that uh, we can only move at the speed of the slowest. So the speed of the slowest is dictated by how weak or how slow is the last person. So if we're really, really strong and we're all moving forward as a team, but we have one person who's limping, we got to move at their speed and keep them up with us. So what we want to do is we want to change this common thinking about strength and we want to consolidate your knowledge, your wisdom on this subject to make you better and brighter and stronger. Throughout the presentation, I'm going to be looking at the slides behind me. You have the slides right here. And so sometimes you're going to be seeing me looking up over there. That's just so that I keep in sync with you. So, victory goes to the strongest. This is really common and, you know, occasionally we see uh, like the Super Bowl uh, where the weaker team comes and overtakes the stronger team or, and everyone gets fired up. But typically the strongest team is the one that wins. So these thoughts about strength are what just to get you in the mood. My question to you today is do you want to grow? You personally, do you want to grow? Honestly, if you're just watching this for entertainment, it's a waste of your time. But if you're watching this with the mindset that, you know, I've learned a lot of stuff, I've done a lot of cool things, I have a lot of experience but I want to go further, I want to get better, I want to be stronger, I want to get, I want to give more, then this is what's for you. So if your answer to this question is, do I want to grow? Mm, not really, then probably the rest of the training program isn't really worth it. It's not for you. But if the answer is, yes, I want to grow, I want to go forward, I want to learn, then this is definitely for you. And I think my second question that goes along with that is, do you want to be a leader? You know, so oftentimes we have people with talent that just really don't lead. They don't do much with it. They live in their own little sphere and they just succeed or produce based on the circumstances around them. But what I want to call you to is to a higher level where you take what you know, what you've learned in life and where you apply that to the people who you're responsible for. So instead of just having these old stories, these cool uh, ideas that, yeah, you know, before I did this or I did that, converting that into, okay, I did this, I did work there, I learned this, I learned that. What am I doing with that information? Am I converting that information into valid experience for the people that work with me? And if we are, then we're leading. And that's what I want from you. I want you to be an inspirational, great leader in your business. So, to get us going, what I want you to do is I want you to take out an A3 piece of paper, which looks exactly like this. So, get yourself organized. If you need to pause the video, do so. Get yourself an A3 piece of paper. And I'll tell you why. A4 is a small limited space, but what we need to be doing is like mind mapping or brainstorming, but we're brainstorming about you. So get yourself an A3 piece of paper and put it in front of you. Now, here on the slide it says, let's identify three of your strengths. So what do I mean by that? I mean simply write down on this paper three of your strengths. So for example, one of my strengths would be organizing people to get stuff done by a deadline. I would say that's one of my strengths. Another one of my strengths might be um, answering my emails within 24 hours. I would say that's a strength. High communication, I want stuff done. So what I want you to do is just take a minute here and write down your three strengths. So we'll pause, you write them down, 
and then we'll continue. Now, I'm assuming that you've done that. So what I want you to do now is write next to it why you consider these three things your strength. So the reason for this question is just to cause you to wrestle a little bit in your own mind. Okay, I got these three strengths. Now why do I think I'm strong in them? People verified it. I know it. Uh, I have a lot of experience in it. Why do you consider yourself to be strong in these three areas? Now, you got these three strengths. Perhaps the single most important question is, do you use these strengths to make a difference? And honestly, there's two ways to use your strength. You can use your strength, and I'm looking at the slides here, for the good of others. So you're good at something, you help other people, and you make them prosper, you make them grow, you make them expand, you make them come to life. You search out the good things in them, and you polish them and make them brighter people. That's using your strength for the good of others. But there's a second way of using your strength, and that's for yourself. And this is what I see a lot in the hospitality industry, and this is what destroys great managers. They become great, they get a good job, they get there in this position, this new title, whatever it is, and then while they're sitting there, they suddenly start using their strength for themselves and not for others. Very subtle. Starts with things like answering every question you're asked. That's a big weakness. Somebody asks you a question, you answer it. Oh, great, you have the answer. Next guy asks you a question, you answer it. Wow, you're the guy, you know, you, you have all the answers. This kind of person is a disaster. Because what happens is they build up this invincibility wall. They are in charge of everything, they know everything, and they are the highest ceiling of growth for everybody else. No, what we want to be looking at is the manager who questions other people when they ask him a question. So they say, well, how should we do this, sir? And they say, well, what's your idea? How would you do it? And that's using your strength for others. So what you do there is you open up other people by asking them questions, and then you use your experience and strength to guide them, to direct them, to lead them on the right path. So that's what today's session is all about. And so now I want to look at the other side. We look at strength. What about weakness? What is weakness? What's the common perception of weakness? And I think we can see that quite often in when we do employee evaluations. So when we do an employee evaluation, we measure the employee's strengths and weaknesses. We do it on a chart. We give them a rating. We rate them from 1 to 10. So we say, okay, 10 is perfection, 1 is disaster, people should fall around 6 or 7 in the majority, and we'll have a couple of guys at 9, and probably we'll have one or two at 5 or 6. So what I want to tell you is that we have trained this generation to live in the happiness of their failure. And you would probably think, what is he talking about? Okay. If you think about this, you go to university and you take an exam, you get a grade, A, B, C, D, E, fail. Or you get a GPA, so you get 2.2, 2.4, 3.0, really bright guy gets a 3.2, very few people get a 4.0, which is like 10 over 10. So what we are doing there is we're saying, look, you can go and study in university or school, you can take the exam, and at the end, we'll tell you what degree of failure you are. Think about that. If you were 100%, you would have passed. But instead of saying, you didn't get 100%, you failed, we say, you didn't get 100%, but you're pretty good, you're real close, so we give you an A. What a load of nonsense. This is where the system is destroyed. Why? You hire somebody to fly an airplane. You put them through their university, and then they take their flight lessons. You tell them, okay, son, 
here's the plane, let's go. You fly it. He said, okay, sir. Then he gets in the cockpit and he says on the uh, tannoy, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board the flight from Beirut to London today. I just want to tell you that I am a B minus uh, in landing the plane. I hope you enjoy the flight. No one will stay on the plane. No one wants to be in an 80% chance that the plane is going to land. We want a 100% guarantee that plane is going to land. What about the bank? The bank hires a graduate from university. They look for the best and the brightest. They get the B plus and the A minus. So we're talking about students who have an 89, 92, or a 3.4, 3.6 GPA. So we hire them. We put them in to work at the bank. They start their job. And at the end of the day, they turn back the money minus $1,000. And their manager says, excuse me, where's the $1,000? He said, do not. I'm a 92% student, you gave me 10K, here's uh, 9 point something, there's about a thousand missing. He tell you, what? You cannot do that. Give me the thousand dollars. I don't have it. I lost it somewhere. Really? Okay, we'll deduct it from your salary. That's reality. That's real life. You want the job done 100%. Hospitality industry. You check in the hotel. You say, I want to stay in a twin room with a sea view and I want to have a fruit basket in the room uh, and whatever it else is. You check in, you're in a room that overlooks a wall, it's a double bed. You wouldn't accept. You say, what's wrong with this hotel? The service doesn't work. You're sitting in a restaurant, you order a tuna steak and you get a beef steak well done. That doesn't work. We want tuna steak as we ordered it. We don't want a beef steak well done. And then the waiter says, oh, I'm sorry, it's still steak. But this one's tuna, not beef. Well, this is beef, not tuna. We don't care. We're not interested in the stories. We want 100%. But all in time in university and all the education, we said, you can have 7 over 10, 8 over 10, 9 over 10. We were telling them you can fail theoretically, but when you contact with the real world, boom, there's an explosion. Because all this nonsense of not having to be 100% goes right out the window and you have to start being 100% from that day. So, I know this is quite intense, but that is a reality today in our industry. And this is one of the reasons I believe that today we see the lowest levels of service in great hotels and it's accepted. Because we live in an average world, average. Average is okay, average is a pass. No, what we have to focus on is excellence, is growing always better, being better prepared, doing a better job. So, when someone we know in an organization is weak, what do we normally do with them? What do we do with the weak employees and individuals in a company or a group or a team? We kick them out. Let's be frank. You have a weak guy, you bring him in. Listen, son, you're late or you're not doing your job right. And we give him a warning, we give him a advice, a direction, we tell him, come on, wake up, let's do it right. We do that one, two, three times and then we say, I'm sorry, you didn't make it, let's go. Bye bye. That's what happens in reality. That's the world we live in. So, what I want to do today is I want to say this is all wrong. And today we're here to understand how wrong these general perceptions of weaknesses are. What I want to look at today is weakness is the potential for our greatest growth and the path to our greatest strength. So I'm going to repeat that for you. Weakness is the potential for our greatest growth. So when we're weak, this is where we can grow the most. And the path to our greatest strength. And that's the whole point of what I want to talk to you about today. So, the how, what I'd like you to do is if you've enjoyed what I've been talking about, is you can just sign up uh, down below there. Just click on the sign me up and you can join our full seminar. It's a one hour session. It'll take you all the way through how to develop your strengths and weaknesses. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for being with the Hospitality Academy today. It's always great to have you on board. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.